Hello. In this problem, we would like to construct a free body diagram of member AB. Compute and include the numeric reactions. So this will be step one of our solution here. Um, and then we're going to tackle step two. And step two asks, asks us to construct a second free body. This one is going to cut through plane CC on this beam. All right, let's do the first task. So we want a free body of member AB. So our strategy is to free the body from the supports, just like this. Detach from B, detach from A. And then I just add in reactions to represent the effects of those supports on the body. I'll call these A sub Y and B sub Y with the assumption that we have a nice planar coordinate system X, Y as shown. All right, I am going to go ahead and dial down the contrast on that one. And what I think I'm going to do is take all of this load in this rectangle. I'm going to turn that into one uh, equivalent force and all of the load under this triangular part of our trapezoid, I'm going to turn that into a second equivalent force. Let's do F sub 1 and F sub 2. F sub 1, uh, since that is the third point of the triangle from the heavy side or the side on the left, we'll measure that out as 3 feet. F sub 2 is half of 9, half of that distance. So I'll place this down here as 4.5 feet. And I'll just one more thing to remind myself. The total length of the beam is 9 plus 6, or 15 feet. In this picture, I'm going to go ahead and just make the body uh, with that rectangle. And I will add our two unknowns, A sub Y and B sub Y, as shown. Okay, now that I've got all that kind of sorted out, oh, I didn't remove that base layer. And um, I'll even move this one up a little bit just to get a little more real estate. So we'll kind of put that up there, maybe make that a little bit smaller. Okay, now we're ready to start figuring out what those forces are and um, solve these numeric reactions on the problem. Use a blue color here. All right, so let's figure out what F sub 1 is. That's the piece underneath the triangle. Um, the area under the curve, so the height of the triangle is 16 minus 6 equals 10 kips per foot. The base of the triangle is 9 feet. And of course, we need that 1 half modifier. That's going to give us 45 kips, which I will add to my picture up above 40 five kips. Switch colors back to my blue color again. Let's figure out what F sub 2 is. Now I just need the area under the curve of the rectangular piece. That one's got a base. Well, let me do the height first. It's got a height of six kips per foot. Six kips per foot over a base of nine feet. Multiply that out and I'll get 54 kips or kilopounds of force. Okay, now that I've got that sorted out, I'm going to mask these calculations I just did by putting in a little bit of white pigment there, adding a new layer and going back to a blue color. All right, so now that we've got our distributed loads or line loads turned into equivalent forces or equivalent point loads, uh, we're ready to do our um, equations of equilibrium. I'm going to choose to do a summation of moments about A, set that equal to zero. How many terms? One, two, three. First term, 45 kips, distance three 
feet. Next term, 54 kips, distance 4.5 feet. Last term, B sub y unknown, distance 15 feet. Set that equal to zero. Now we do the signs. F sub 1 and F sub 2 tend to rotate the body clockwise about A. Therefore, those two terms will get negative signs. B sub y tends to rotate the body counterclockwise about A. That way, we know that that term gets a positive sign. Plug that into your calculator and you will conclude that B sub y is equal to 25.2 kips. We did get a positive sign. And all that means is that the assumption that we made up here, that that reaction pointed upward, that assumption was correct. If you wanted to communicate this emphatically, you might want to add a little arrow here next to that solution. And you could also put this information directly into the drawing if you're so inclined. Okay, let's go and solve for our other unknown, that's a sub y. And now I could, I have a choice here, I could do a moment summation or I could do a force summation. I'll choose a force summation, sum of forces in the y direction equals zero. How many terms? One, two, three, four. Of those four terms, I have two that are pointing up, I have two that are pointing down. So the ones that are pointing up are a sub y plus 25.2 kips. Those have to equal everything pointing down or in the negative direction. 45 kips plus 54 kips. Solve for a sub y, and you'll get 73.8 kips for that unknown. As before, we got a positive value. That confirms our assumption that that reaction force on the body points upwards. I'll go ahead and add that, not with that tool. Okay, I'll go ahead and add that value up above 73.8 kips. And now I can mask out everything down here at the bottom. Let's see. You know what I'm actually going to do? I'm going to do this. Give me just a second to get my layers under control. Okay. Okay. I'm actually going to mask out this picture up here. I'll do that by placing a white coat into that layer, and then I'm going to draw on top of it. And what I want to do here is you know the second part of this of this problem. So what have we done already? We just constructed a member of a, mem a free body diagram of member AB. We computed and included the numeric reactions, and now we're asked to construct a free body that cuts through plane CC. And here we have a choice. We have this free body. Pow. I'm sorry, I got the wrong tool. I'll do that one more time. Boop, 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 through C, cut, 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 cut. Remove reaction at A. So all these free bodies, as they become more complex, it's kind of like a surgical operation to make sure you're getting exactly what you need. All right, so there is one free body that we can use. How do we put that in equilibrium? Well, I need to add the reaction at the left. That's equal to 73.8 kips. And then at the cut, I need to draw the internal forces in the positive direction. All right, listen carefully. For the positive X face of this plane, a positive internal shear force is defined as downward. 
Okay, if you want to give this a subscript, you could do CC. I'm just going to leave it as V since there's no ambiguity which shear force I'm talking about. Okay, um, my other sign convention for internal bending moment will go that way. Okay, now that free body's in equilibrium and I can do operations on it. I could also pick the other free body diagram. Here is what I would do there. Disconnect it from the support at B, slice through the solid material, but this time I just want the right side of the body. Copy merged, edit paste, and put that little beauty over here. Okay, so I could also use this free body diagram. Now, how do I put this one in equilibrium? Let me do a, do a little bit of um, sketching here to make this crystal, crystal clear. Okay, so I've got two different free bodies. All right, let's put this little puppy into static equilibrium. What is my vertical reaction at B? I come back here and I grab that 25.2 kips. And then at that cut plane, listen carefully. This is the part that is most misunderstood. Since I'm now looking at the negative X side of plane CC, the sign convention for V and M is going to look opposite of what we drew a moment ago. So here on this side, a positive shear force is defined as an upward force. And now a positive bending moment is defined as clockwise. All right, now I've got my two free body diagrams. Let's see, I'm going to keep that, get rid of this, get rid of that, add a new layer and finish this up. All right, at this point, you can ask yourself, are you the type of person that likes to do things the hard way or the easy way? If the answer is the hard way, I would recommend messing with that free body diagram. If you like to do things the easy way, I am going to recommend doing this one. I'm going to solve it the easy way. But if you want to cement this concept and prove to yourself that you'll get the same answer exactly with either of these, go ahead and do this one as well. All right, let's finish the solution with the, the free body. Um, this one right over here. Okay, we would like to solve for the shear force V. Summation of forces in the y direction equals zero. The unknown v is pointing upwards, positive. 25.2 kips is upward positive. Set that equal to zero. And so we will get a negative shear force for the solution of v. If we wanted to solve for the internal bending moment m, I'm going to do a moment summation at the cut plane equals zero. So I'm thinking about the axis that is coming out of the screen. It is right there. Okay, so axis coincident to this point. Okay, and that axis is coming right out of the screen. How many terms are we going to have in that moment equation? Well, I'm definitely going to have this unknown in there. I don't need the shear force because that is coincident to the point about which I'm summing the moments. And I will have a term for this. So two terms in my moment equation. First term is the moment itself. That one is clockwise negative. Next term, 25.2 kips at a distance of three feet. That one is counterclockwise positive. Set that equal to zero, and you get moment equal to the product of 25.2 times three, and those units will be in kip feet, and you'll get a positive value. There you go. So the correct solution to this problem, we did this free body 
a little earlier. Problem asks you to come up with two free bodies. So we did a free body of member AB first, including the numeric reactions. And then we showed a free body that cuts through the plane CC. You're asked to show V and M in the positive direction, but you don't need to solve for them. So that means you're going to pick either this one or this one to communicate that information. That's the end of this video. Thanks for watching.